hey guys, look at me, I'm inside, I'm not outside in the cold. But essentially one of my students has, you know, a really nice indoor facility that he's letting me use. So, you know, you know who you are. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. But we got a track man. We got a nice simulator here to be able to hit some shots. And the nice thing with this is I'm going to be able to make so many videos, you know, how to hit a fade, how to hit a draw, how to hit a low, how to hit a high, and then be able to show you the numbers. And you'll see them on screen at the bottom here shortly of why that's happening. So we'll be able to explain the ball flight in track man terms, which can be a little confusing at the start, but it's going to go a long way. But essentially today, I'm just going to, I'm just going to explain some of these numbers, what I look for when I'm hitting driver. Right now, I'm hitting driver like absolute ass right now. So we're kind of coming off. This is the first real range session I've had since taking some time off uh, for about a month or so. But I'm hitting a lot of gross shots, which we don't want to do. But essentially, I'm going to hit some shots here. I'm going to explain each one of these things here, most of them anyways, and um, what I'm looking for in terms of numbers of driver. So just going to swing pretty normal. We're going to see... Where it goes. So I felt reasonably decent. Kind of a bit of a, a push to the right. It's not bad, not awful. Um, but you know what? I'll be able to go into the detail of explaining kind of each one of these. So we'll start from left to right. Club speed, it's basically how fast the club's traveling through impact. Very self explanatory. Attack angle, essentially. It's the angle in which, like this is the ground, club's traveling, you know, at, at impact. So because this is uh, positive, we're actually coming slightly up on the ball, right? If it was negative, we'd be coming down on it. I, that's a little high. I'd like to see it probably closer to like two for me. Um, ball speed, that's essentially how fast the ball is traveling right after impact. Not bad. 174 is pretty decent for me. I'd like to see a little bit higher, but that's fine. Spin, this is actually a really good spin rate for me. You know, I like to see between 23 and 2600 just because I like to hit kind of the, the higher launch, excuse me, low spin ball flight. Um, the only thing, though, when you're inside, you need to take spin with a grain of salt just because, you know, the balls, the mat, simulator, everything inside spin isn't tracked as well as it um, could be. Um, so you just have to make sure because the spin really affects how far the ball goes in terms of the total distance. So I don't really take total distance when I'm inside as seriously when I'm outside, but that's essentially what spin is. Um, carry, that one carried just under 300, decent shot. Um, face angle, so this is a really important one that I look at. So basically, because like attack angle, this is positive, um, right? There's positive and negative, but sorry, unlike attack angle. Um, if it's positive, the club face at impact is slightly open for a right-handed golfer. If it's negative, the club face is going to be slightly closed. So essentially, here, this ball, this this shot started 2.3 degrees to the right, and look here, it it literally went to the right immediately because 80, 80 to 85 percent of the ball is determined, or the start line of the ball is determined by club face position and impact. So for the most part, if your club face is open at impact, the ball is going to start to the right. If it's closed at impact, it's going to start to the left. So. It's, that's a big one here. I like to keep that as close to, depending on what type of ball flight I'm hitting, um, I like to keep the numbers relatively tight, relatively small. Um, total distance, that went 320-ish, so nothing amazing. Um, smash factor, basically, again, take that with a grain of salt, but essentially, I hit that very much in the middle of the face. 1.5 is pretty perfect for um, smash. If you hit it, you know, a little heely, a little toey, that number's going to come down just a little bit, so... I, you know, I try to like to, I like to keep that, you know, around 1.48 to 1.5 would be perfect for driver. Launch angle, essentially that's the angle which the ball is leaving, um, you know, at impact. So that was about 13 degrees. So it's traveling about, you know, 13 degrees on the up. So not bad, a little low for me. I'd probably like to see a little bit higher launch with a little bit lower spin, um, you know, between like 13 and 15 is fine. So I'm going to skip this briefly and go straight to club path because club face and club uh, face path is related to the face angle of the club path. But essentially there, again, like club face, that path is positive. So that means at impact, my club face was traveling to the right, right? If it was negative, that means it's traveling to the left for a right-handed golfer um, through impact there. So in order to hit a draw, which is my typical ball flight, 
unlike this, um, that needed to be um, base for me to hit a draw. I need a positive club path because I want it to start right and peel over. Like a, but because this face angle is greater than my club path, it's going to be a push fade, unfortunately. Uh, not a great ball flight to have. If this, I needed this to be less, less than this. So assuming good context, so it would peel back over. If if this if this was one point four as well as one point four, it just would have been a straight push. It wouldn't have faded at all. It just would have been a straight push. So in order to hit, I'll hit another one here. See if I can draw one. See if I can get this under this, and you'll be able to see what an actual draw looks like. Um, but yeah, essentially the face to path is the relationship between the face angle and the, and the club path. So, you know, if you're trying to hit a certain ball flight, you need that face to path to be pretty decent. So if the greater this face to path gets, the bigger your dispersion is going to get. If this was like, say this was 7.4 and this was, you know, whatever, 2.3, that face to path is going to get greater. And then that's just going to result in a much um, different ball flight, essentially. So I'm going to hit another one here just to see if we can actually hit a draw. You know, you guys think I'm a very good golfer, so I should probably be able to hit a draw on demand. So again, ideally, if I hit this perfectly, assuming good contact, this is going to be closer to one, ideally zero, and that's going to be similar-ish. About two degrees would be perfect. That felt pretty decent. I think it should draw a little bit. No, it did it. My God. So let's see how the numbers changed. Um, let's see. So face angles positive. This is, sorry, my club path was, okay, that makes sense. So because these are relatively close, it's just going to result in that kind of push to the right. But what you don't see on here and what had to have happened is because this should have result based on these numbers, you know, they're very, very close. It should have been relatively tighter in terms of a push, not a lot of curve to it. But with driver, something called gear effect. And essentially, if you hit it on the toe, it's going to cause the club face to open, right? And then you get that kind of toe hook. Get it on the heel, it's going to close. You kind of get that heel fade, right? So that's really, depending on where you contact it, contact it, your club path um, is going to look a lot different, essentially. So let's hit one more. My goodness, again, rusty. So I'm kind of not really, not really swinging particularly well, to be honest. So I need to, I need to practice up. It's kind of gross. Let's see if we can hit our draw. Or relatively straight, to be honest. Nope. That's so far right. So far right. Whew. Like, decent distance. I'm mean, doing the same thing every single time. Like, my face is just so open and impact. My club path was just too, too zeroed out. My gosh. Like... If I keep doing that, I'm just going to get these gross push fates all day, every day. Like, it's kind of hard, you know, when I'm inside, my focus isn't as there as it should be. But all right, I'll really try to crank it. Here, we'll get a draw for you guys. That should draw. I mean, there you go. So, Okay. Perfect. So we got, I, I, I did have great contact here, 1.5. And again, we got a perfect draw there. See how this face angle, because again, we need this positive because I want to start it to the right and have it peel back. I don't want to start it left. I don't want to miss a draw left. So this needs to be positive. So I need it to start directly just a little bit right at target. And then this, we got it too. So earlier in the video, like I said, we wanted this around one, that around two so we can get that really nice, um, perfect draw, assuming decent contact. So that was a much better swing. Um, th these are the numbers I, I like seeing with driver, um, to be honest. Uh, you know, distance is great. We can crank one up and honestly, I'll, 
I'll try to hit one as hard as I can just to see what that does to the numbers. But something like that, I'm swinging relatively within myself, focusing up because, you know, I'm making a video right now, so I'm not exactly, you don't have my undivided focus here, but I'm going to swing this one a lot faster and we'll see what happens. You know, the faster you swing, you're going to create a little bit more speed if you do it ineffectively. You're going to create it with your hands. We don't want to do that, but let's see if we can crank it up here. Try to get this closer to 180 ball speed. Club head speed around 120 would be nice. So I think that's going to go to the right. right. Pretty straight, not bad. So much better. Did we get our 180 ball speed? No, not bad. So we got a little bit, a little bit more distance there. Got this at 119, very, very straight ball flight, which is nice. Tack angle, very similar, ball speed up, 178. This is this is probably why the ball went a little bit further, rolled about 20 plus yards, 25 yards. This was very low. So again, take that with a grain of salt. The ball, you know, you got to take that into account. Face angle, so very much zeroed at impact, which is why it started very straight in this club path, one degree. So that's why you're getting a very, very, very straight ball flight. Um, yeah, not bad. You know, I don't mind. I don't mind these numbers. I was actually pretty decent for um, for a swing, really hard swing. Let's try one more. Um, see what that does. But yeah, see if we can get up to 120. I'm gonna try to really push off the ground here. Um, A little bit wider stance. Ah, ah, yeah, a little bit to the right. Very similar numbers to last time. But let's see why it went to the right compared to the last one. So pretty much at zero. Um, so this started pretty straight on line. The the face to path was slightly different here. So honestly, those numbers were very, very similar to the last one. So basically what that tells me is I probably hit that slightly, slightly on the heel, to be honest. So that's why it's kind of peeling. Like those, in terms of numbers, those are two very, very similar shots. So it's, it really just comes down to context. You can make a really good swing, but if your contact's not great, it's going to, you know, it's going to really result in a different ball flight. So, yeah, I mean, I really don't love seeing it left to right, to be honest. But that's the problem if you have a very neutral club face and club path is you're at the mercy of missing it left and right. If you just had a very... You know, if your club path was a lot more, so you only hit fades, like your club path is going to be a lot more negative, probably negative three or four. It's hard to get to that, you know, positive, right? So let's do one more swing. I know I've said that like four times. I don't even really understand what the point of this video is, but I'm just kind of, just kind of talking out what I see. So do you want to crank it? All right. You know, we'll crank it one last one as hard as we can. All right. Yeah, I don't know if I can swing much harder than that. Ah, higher ball speed, which is nice. The highest one we've got today. Oh, but swung a lot harder. Spin's going to come up quite a bit. That's why it's a lot higher. Launch angle a little higher. Club path is actually negative there, so it's swinging actually slightly to the left. Ugh. That's not bad. I mean, you know what those numbers are? Just way too high. All right. <laughs> this is going to be my real last one. This is just going to be a stock driver swing. Ideally, I should see my club head speed go down to maybe 115-ish. Ball flight should be a little bit more of a draw. Okay. This is just my stock swing that I see on course. So I should see better numbers. Let's see. Fade. Gross. Let's see. Club path, you know, pretty, pretty standard face, pretty standard. 
Probably just hit that slightly on the heel again. So, you know, that was better. That was a good swing, but just heel contact. So, I mean, how how far offline even was that? Let's hey see guys, if sorry I Sorry the video does cut out at this point, but essentially, if you want me to do more of these, I would absolutely love to do them. I'm thinking of doing like a full-on practice session of just me like, you know, going through an hour, what I'm doing, what I'm thinking and all that stuff. I was just kind of um, free thinking here to be honest, but if you do like that, a little bit of my insight when I'm practicing, um, yeah, let me know. Please comment, like, subscribe, tell me what you liked about this video and tell me what you want to see in future videos because I'm going to have access to that um, facility. You know who you are, I appreciate it. But, um, but yeah, more videos will be on the way. So, all right, remember. Comment, like, subscribe. Cheers.